Hello Godower! In this video, we'll talk about how to start your project right and make your life easier using good, clean file structures and overt naming schemes. First, let me say that I know that you'll find the tasks in this video annoying, boring, and tedious. However, making games is a craft, and like any good craftsman, you need to maintain your tools. A fine woodworker isn't going to just throw their tools in any old random box, leaving them dirty and unsharpened. No, that woodworker is going to clean and maintain their tools, putting them in their proper places so that when they go to do a job, those tools are ready and usable and make the work easier and better. As a game developer, your files and folders are part of your toolset. Take care of them, clean them, and keep them tidy so they're both easily accessible and at their best when you or someone in your workshop needs to use them. Even if you're working on a very small team or even solo, you still want to build these habits because when you're doing a mid-long-term project like a game, you'll want to treat your future self as a totally separate person who knows nothing about what you're doing. Don't rely on memory or even code comments to ensure you'll remember how you did a thing when you inevitably have to revisit it later. Our goal is to make it as easy as possible on a human brain to access what you need, when you need it. Let's start with three basic rules. Rule number one, never use spaces in your folder or file names. Accessing files and folders in code is much harder and error prone if you use spaces, so just don't. Rule number two, prefix files that are of the same class or type or function with the same word or phrase when they're in a folder that's not been subdivided. Doing so will allow Godot's file tree to automatically group and alphabetize your, fo your files so you can easily find what you need. It'll also make it easier to do more advanced things with directory objects, like pulling only files that are a certain class into a library for ease of access and other scripts. And rule number three, rubber ducking is not only for code. Use it when you set up your file structure. Talk to yourself or your rubber duck out loud if necessary about why you are putting a particular file in a particular place. If you can't explain to someone else why a file goes where you're putting it, it probably shouldn't go there. Whenever you start a new project, you need to start it correctly. Do not fall into the I'll reorganize this later trap because you won't. And if you do get to a point where you absolutely must reorganize it, you're going to cause yourself problems. It's best practice to be proactive in your file tidiness because much like real life tidiness, it only gets harder and more overwhelming to do the longer you put it off. Per a suggestion on the Reddit thread that informed this video, let's first take a look at some things to avoid. Our first example is obvious, don't just put everything in the root folder. Even if everything is named properly, it's still too unorganized to make navigating your project easy, especially if you're ever going to need help. Second, and this might make some folks drop immediately to the comments to tell me how wrong I am, but don't split things into scripts and scenes. I see projects and tutorials structured like this a lot, and it makes no sense to me to split the script from the scene it's attached to. Chances are, when I need a script, I'm also going to need the things associated with that script, and I don't want to navigate away from what I'm doing to try to locate the associated files. I tend to iterate quickly, so I'm going to want to run the scene whose script I'm working on multiple times during the creation of the script, so I want the files readily available. If you are a person who organizes your projects in this scene script split way, and it works for you, please let me know in the comments why you prefer this method because I'm genuinely curious to know why people organize their projects like this. Being an amateur dev, maybe there's a reason I haven't thought of and I'd like to understand the reasoning better. Next, don't just import files and not change their names. Your files should be named in a way that reflects their purpose in your project. This is an annoying task to be sure, but future you will be so delighted that you took the time to complete this bit of housekeeping. You can see here in this list, there's just a bunch of things, and um, we're not entirely sure what all of them do. Um, they have icons that have different possible uses. We have a font here that is sort of named okay, but not great and not easily identifiable as what it is. And then we have these that are just strings of numbers and characters that these are atlas textures, but I have no idea what's in these. And in order to do, in order to know, I would have to actually go into each of them, and I don't want to have to do that every time I'm looking for a particular texture. And the last thing I could think of here was don't have a separate folder for every single thing. You'll want to use your judgment on whether you actually need a separate folder or whether prefixing will suffice. 
My general rule of thumb is that if there's only a few of a thing, i.e. less than one unit of mouse scrolling, then prefixing is the way to go. Once you have to scroll your mouse wheel more than once to get through all of a type of thing, it's time to create a subfolder. For instance, in this setup, go down here into my art. You can see that I have um, a bunch of weapons resources here, resource, um, resource textures. These, uh, if I, uh, you can see I have to scroll more than once to get all the way through my list, which means it's time to make a new folder and we'll make weapons. And then actually these weapons are, or are, should be probably additionally organized by material class because you can see that they're, we've got repeating ones and they all look kind of similar in the thumbnail over here. So let's just make another new folder for iron another new folder for copper and what's this last one this last one's kind of orange we'll make one for bronze we'll call one of them bronze new folder for bronze and now i can take all my weapons that are of the same class organize them by material type and then when i need my individual textures, I can come into art, weapons, and then whichever material type I'm working on, and they're all right there. They're all uniquely identifiable. And honestly, all of these would need renamed as well for the way that I do things, but this is way better than it was. So let's take a look at how I keep my project organized. And please keep in mind that this is just one method for doing this. And the best method is always going to be the one that works for you. Let's start right at the top. The main scene and its script will live in the root or res folder of the game. This is simply because it'll be the scene that holds all other scenes, so accessing it quickly and easily is important. I do not want any other scene files or scripts in this root folder. Everything else should be sorted into another folder based on what type of thing it is. So what kinds of things are there? That's going to depend on the details of your project, but here's what I use for Cats vs. Aliens. First, we have an assets folder. Uh, this will house all the graphics and audio items. It's for organizing all files that were made outside of Godot and anything else that affects the visuals of the game, including shaders, style boxes, fonts, etc. Then I have uh, autoloads, characters, loot, resources, scenes, weapons, and then a folder for depreciated and add-ons. Add-ons is for add-ons, of course, and depreciated is for code that I experimented with and ultimately decided not to use right now, but might want to reference later. I periodically purge everything from this folder so I can make sure nothing in my project depends on it. Now let's talk about folder breakdowns. When deciding how I want to set up my subfolders, I ask myself, will I be looking for these items during a repeated task or at the same time? For instance, if I'm going to be making a bunch of loot items, I'll need my loot item assets, and I do not care about character sprite assets, sound files, or fonts. So all loot assets go into a folder. In that folder, let me bring it open here, I have subfolders for the types of items that have common uses, consumables, materials, and special items. Inside these folders, I have prefixes that describe the texture's use. You can see my source texture prefixed with Atlas here, and the sprite resources that will be used on the actual sprite node prefixed as sprite. Each file is then named with an obvious identifier for the specific item. With this setup, I can easily find what I'm looking for days, weeks, or even years down the road, though let's hope this project doesn't take that long. And if I need help, someone else looking at the files will be able to jump in with minimal orientation to the project and give me an assist. Now let's zoom out a bit and take a look at the overall breakdown that I have here. I have assets broken into audio, common, enemies, GUI, harvest nodes, loot, players, projectiles, save images, shaders, tile sets, unsorted, and upgrades. The only ones here that might not be obvious as to what they are used for are common and unsorted. Common houses all of the assets which are used in conjunction with other assets from other categories, like this small shadow which is used for characters as well as items. Unsorted is where I put all files that I've imported but don't have a specific use for yet. 
They are, as the folder name suggests, unsorted and unnamed. Then we have auto loads, which doesn't need broken down. We have characters, which goes into NPCs, enemies, players, and universal components. Loot has drops and harvestable nodes. Resources has mainly just prefixed files as well as defaults and scripts. Scenes breaks down into buildings, components, furniture, GUI, handlers, scripts, testing, and this is where my main game world lives. And lastly, I have weapons, which breaks down by individual weapon, and then I have a scripts and bases folder, which house the inherited scenes, or the scenes from which all of the weapons will inherit. Now, let's go back and take a look at the character folder and subfolders again. We have enemies, NPCs, players, which are your basic three types of characters that exist in Cats vs. Aliens. Then we have this universal components folder, this Universal Components folder is very helpful because it will house all of the things that are shared by all the different character types. Things like speech bubbles, uh, hitboxes, and prompt icons live in here, so I can easily find and change something that will affect all characters. It also has a Scripts folder for housing scripts that are used without being directly attached to a node in the scene tree. The info underscore character stats fi file, for example, which you can probably guess is a custom resource I use to store information about character stats. I probably didn't even need to tell you that because it's right there in the file name. Now let's instead drill down into the players folder and take a look at how this is set up. My players folder has one individual folder for each named player character, as well as a components folder. This components folder houses all the components that will be on every single player character scene. Much like the universal components has things that are shared between all kinds of characters, the components that is a subfolder of players holds all the components that are common to all different player scenes. Now let's take a look at an individual player's folder. Let's we'll take a look at Kitsy Catsy here. You can see that in the player folder, I have resources that are associated specifically with Kitsy Catsy. In each of these folders, the only thing that goes in this folder are things that only Kitsy Catsy will use. We've got Perlock Holmes with the same thing, Tatley and Wiggins all have their own animation data underscore name, character underscore name, and stats underscore name. Without saying anything about what's in those, I'll bet you guys can guess what each of those things is. Now let's pop over to the resources folder and see another advantage in action of prefixing. Now, it is an option to have all of my resources sorted into folders. However, I prefer to have them not sorted and just prefixed because this way I can just right click on my resources folder in my scene tree over here, click on new resource, create my new resource, Select something with the same prefix or create a new prefix if I need to. Get a name in there after the underscore. Save it. And now it's right there in the list with everything else automatically sorted because we have sort by name on. And I didn't have to do any extra clicks to get into any more folders. Now for resources, I will probably end up going back later and creating subfolders if the list gets too long for any one type of resource. I'll be sure to use the editor's file system to move these items, and doing so will allow the engine to pick up the move and update references to the resources automatically as long as I haven't hard-coded any of the paths anywhere. Then in the scripts folder here, I have all of the files organized by what type of resource script they are in relation to my project. Anything with the prefix info underscore, the script is a resource or a custom resource that's meant to represent information regarding whatever comes after the prefix. Info about a building item, info about dialogue, info about a quest, etc. Then I have the same for savable resources here. These things, this um, savable prefix indicates to my brain that this is part of the save system and if I need to update something in the save system, this is where I need to look. So that about wraps up what has basically become a lecture at this point. And um, on that note, I will leave you with two tips to kind of help smooth out some of this process. One, name external assets as soon as you import them. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, it takes time when you really, really want to just drop that sprite shit into the animated sprites frames and make your character move. But good habits will get you much farther and keep your project clean and your dev process running smoothly. 
keep your tools clean and organized. And tip number two, if you must move or rename something, do it in the engine. If, you're, if you move your files in the engine, Godot can pick up the move and update all of your references that aren't hard-coded. And if you run into a problem with a file that's moved and the engine did not catch it, you can always just right-click on a scene. I'll show you here. Right-click, and you can just click Edit Dependencies, and you can come in here and uh, choose, the, choose a new path, or choose or find the new path for whatever broken dependencies that you've created by moving something. I hope this overview of the structure of Cats vs. Aliens has helped you get an idea of how to make your projects easier to navigate, and if you keep in mind the rules that we mentioned earlier, and are really just consistent with your behavior, you'll end up with a much more navigable project, which will help you finish your game because it'll eliminate much of the friction and frustration of creating, iterating, and debugging. As always, this is of course just my way of doing things and not the only way to do it, but if you have any questions, uh, or if you need any clarification, or if you just want to say hi, or if you have some kind of helpful, constructive criticism, please let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer you in a timely fashion. Have a wonderful day and happy Godoing!